Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are advised that this film contains images of people who have passed. This was once home to over 12,000 men, women and children. Their voices echo through the archives of the Eastern Goldfields Historical Society. Dozens of towns sprung up within a few years as major new gold finds followed Paddy Hanna's discovery of gold in Kalgoorlie in 1893. The mining camp of Whitefeather grew quickly and, renamed Kanauna, was gazetted as a municipality in 1896. It was a town that would soon become notorious for a gold rush in a cemetery and a priest promoting a sacred nugget from a pub balcony. In this bustling Wild West boom town, the king of Kanauna was Irishman Thomas Doyle, prospector, mine owner, rioter, town councillor, mayor, and perhaps most importantly, publican. The Society's photograph collection reveals Kanauna in Tom Doyle's heyday when the town boasted, two breweries and 16 hotels all doing a roaring business, a stock exchange, a post office, which was soon replaced by a bigger post office, a courthouse, complete with a police force, a fire brigade, schools, a hospital, a race course, and of course, gold miners. Lots of gold miners. Kanauna is described as Australia's largest ghost town. Virtually nothing remains of Major Doyle's community. On Larkin Street, we can actually still see the foundations of the sidewalk and, and the gutter next to it. So we're standing in the, you've got to use your imagination, but this is the middle of the road. And over into where the uh, water tower was. So this was a central landmark of uh, of Kanauna, a giant water tower sitting on this site. Today, all that remains are remnants of the cement foundations. Tom Doyle was one of the first prospectors in the area. Like those who would follow, he was searching for alluvial gold. That's gold that has washed down ancient and now dry and buried streams and rivers. Once those were exhausted, industrial scale underground mining would take over. But in the meantime, Many alluvial gold leads were discovered around Kanauna, and in 1897, one of the best was in a very unusual location. So we're here in the middle of the old Kanauna Cemetery. I say old because there was also a new one. This cemetery has been shifted out of the town, and the reason it was shifted because of all these shafts behind me. Now these are shafts dug by the old prospectors, very close to the cemetery. Now this cemetery was here from 1894 until they shifted it in eight, late 1897. Tazzy O'Connor, a well-known prospector, dug a, a shaft up the top there and he got onto some seriously good gold. And the prospectors were flooding around him and, and uh, he actually worked out that the, the lead, the deep buried alluvial gold channel, was going through the cemetery. All the other prospectors saw this and they pegged all around and you can see all the shafts in the distance. Now, because it was government ground and it was sacrosanct, they weren't allowed to dig the holes in the, in the actual cemetery. So they had to wait for the government to declare it open. The sanctity of God's acre versus gold? It was no contest. A day and a time was set. At the appointed hour, Warden Troy signaled the start of pegging with the dropping of his handkerchief. They all came rushing in, thousands of them. The mining warden came through, knocked over the pegs that weren't regulation, and he designated that it was, you know, granted to about 12 prospectors who actually ended up finding gold. The following year, Premier John Forrest's government issued the 10-foot regulation that limited alluvial mining to a depth of 10 feet, about three meters. Well, this suited the big companies fine, but the struggling individual diggers, not so much. Following the jailing of several miners, tensions reached a fever pitch. When Premier Forrest came to officially open the new railway between Kalgoorlie and Menzies, he was mobbed by 10,000 angry diggers. Several men were arrested as a result of the riot, including Tom Doyle. Doyle was later acquitted for lack of evidence, but over the next 12 months, his world would be rocked by fraudsters and a very gullible priest. 
both of which events, as you would expect, were all about gold. Father Long was a young Irish Roman Catholic priest who'd arrived in the gold fields two years earlier. When rumors started to circulate about the discovery of a giant nugget of almost pure gold, well, Father Long admitted that he'd actually seen the nugget. But he'd been sworn to secrecy by the two men who claimed to have found it. They said that they needed to register their claim before revealing the location of its discovery. But that Father Long could talk about the nugget itself. Well, naturally, the town went crazy. Long was besieged by miners and press reporters demanding to know where the nugget had been found. As tensions further escalated, Father Long decided that, well, he would tell all he knew, and he'd make an announcement from the balcony of the Criterion Hotel at 2 p.m. on the 11th of August. I'm standing here on the corner of Larkin Street and Isabella Street, which is the main intersection of Canowna. And behind me is the site of the Criterion Hotel, the site of the famous Father Long Sacred Nugget incident. Word had gotten out and thousands of prospectors had come into town and they'd been uh, assembled here right where I'm standing. Thousands, probably up to 2,000 prospectors all standing, looking up at the second floor balcony just behind me, waiting on his every word. And finally he came out and uh, said, please raise your hand if you will not hound me after this when I'll tell you what it And dutifully they all held up their hand and he said, the nugget I was led to believe was found three miles down on the Canalpy Road and no sooner had the words left his lips that there was a massive stampede and all the prospectors on horses, on bicycles and sulkies and on foot and uh, raced out there to be the first to stake a claim on this supposed rush. Unfortunately, the, the first people there found out that there was no gold found there. They'd sunk holes all over the place, but uh, it was a ruse and poor old Father Long um, uh, had to accept that it was a, a fake or a dupe and uh, that he'd been made a fool of in many respects. Years later, it was speculated that the hoax had been perpetrated by a man known locally as a practical joker. Apparently, he'd painted a rock with gold paint and, you know, just for fun, told the naive young priest of his find. Facing financial problems and a messy divorce, the one-time King of Canauna took his own life in 1905. Within a few years of Doyle's death, gold production started to decline and Canauna started to shrink with it. Buildings were stripped of materials and sometimes whole buildings were transported to build other towns. Less than 20 years after it was founded, Canauna was no longer a municipality. Canauna has all but disappeared, but its ghosts may still be heard as you walk down Isabella Street. <laughs>